Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 6th of March. Financial markets are fully buying into the Federal Reserve's higher for longer narrative on interest rates with US two-year Treasury yields fast approaching 5% and the 10-year yield breaking back above 4%. Strong activity at the start of the year and a surprise jump in core inflation now means that 25 basis point rate hike at the March, May and June FOMC meetings are the minimum expectations from the FOMC. In fact, markets are pricing a 25% chance that the Fed moves by 50 basis points at the March FOMC meeting. There are two events to watch in the week ahead that will have an important bearing on the near-term outlook for monetary policy. Firstly, Federal Reserve Chair Powell will be appearing before Congress to present the central Bank's semi-annual monetary policy report. His testimony will be closely followed for hints as to whether he thinks there should be a re-acceleration in the Fed's policy tightening or whether having hiked rates so far so fast that the more modest 25 basis point incremental moves remain the most uh, sensible course of action to take. He will be appearing before the Senate on Tuesday and then the House of Representatives on Wednesday. After that, all eyes will turn to the February jobs report. Uh, U.S. payrolls likely uh, to mean revert to a still firm pace in February after the unexpected 517k surge in January. Also look for the unemployment rate to stay unchanged at 3.4% and wage growth to print a strong 0.4% month over month. So from a technical perspective, if we look at the dollar index, we are still tracking this corrective cycle whilst we have the swing low in place at 102.40s. We are looking for a test of 105.50s. So look in the early part of the week to find support into the 103.90s, 103.80s for this final extension up into our target zone, 105.50s. And as long as we maintain the negative momentum divergence, we'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the short side. First downside objective is going to be a test of this projected ascending trend channel support 10350s. At this stage, any direct loss of this trend channel support through 103 will be a bearish development suggesting that we already have the corrective high in place for the dollar index. And then we look for a retest of the 10239 swing low ahead of the high volume node at 101.70s. Moving to the Eurozone, very light uh, data slate there this week. We have on Monday, January retail sales month over month, yeah, and the year over year percentage. Looking for uh, negative 2.7 to negative 2.8 on that print. And then on Wednesday, we get Q4 GDP revised, and that's pretty much going to be quarter over quarter flat at 0.1%. So from a technical perspective with the euro dollar, uh, similar or the inverse really to the dollar index, we're looking for a test of the equality objective versus the swing high uh, 10807 gives us 10430s. So I'd be looking for any early strength to fade below the 107 handle for the Last leg to the downside to test into our quality objective. And there, as long as we maintain bullish momentum divergence, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the long side, looking to take out the trend channel resistance back through 105.70s, en route then to test the high volume node 107.30s, and then on to our potential uh, B wave high at the 108.05. Moving to the UK. In terms of data for the week ahead, we have um, GDP set for release. UK economic output fell sharply in December and probably only partially rebounded in January. Admittedly, these monthly GDP figures have been hard to read owing to distortions surrounding both the Queen's funeral last September and then obviously the World Cup. That uh, December plunge, however, means that the economy is likely to register an overall first quarter GDP decline. The underlying trend in the economy appears to be one of very gradual contraction, thanks in part to ongoing downtrend in retail spending. Uh, markets are expecting a technical recession in the UK in the first half of this year, albeit one that's much not much to write home about. Uh, the fall in wholesale gas prices should help consumer bills fall by the summer, which should limit further damage to consumer spending. From a technical perspective, sterling 
holding uh, triple bottom almost in place now here at the 119.20s. So I'm looking for any retest into this uh, support zone to actually fail. And then we are looking for our downside equality objective 117.82 versus our swing high here at 122.70s. At this stage, it would really take a close through the range resistance that we have in place at the moment, 121.40s, to suggest that we already have a uh, more meaningful low in place and then we'd be thinking about a retest of that 122.60s. Moving to Japan in terms of the data slate this week, it's really going to be all about the BOJ policy decision. It's unlikely that the BOJ will rock the boat at this meeting, even as CPI inflation hits a 41-year high. Governor Kuroda at his last meeting will likely keep policy unchanged with further changes having to wait for the incoming governor Ueda starting in April. Markets expect that the BOJ could shift the top end of the yield curve control band again in the months ahead, potentially as early as April. But we're looking for uh, rates to remain at zero 0.1% uh, and the 10-year yield target to remain flat at 0%. From a technical perspective, Dolly Yen came just shy of the equality target at 137.20s. Could still see one more push up into that area, which would uh, which would complete a, a technical pattern here. Three pushes into a high, and as long as we maintain that uh, bearish momentum divergence, we watch for bearish reversal patterns at that 137.20s to engage on the short side. First stop is going to be a test of the projected ascending trend line support coming in now at 134.90s. Any immediate loss of this trend channel support would be a bearish development, opening a move back down to test 132.80s as the next downside objective. And rounding out the data slate down under in Australia, we get <clears throat> the RBA decision. The focus will be on whether the RBA softens its language in light of recent weaker data on the back of the widening breadth and persistence in inflation, the cash rate in Australia remaining below comparable G10 economies and the Australian economy more likely to benefit from China's reopening. So we're looking for the rate to uh, the cash rate to be maintained at 3.6% uh, when the announcement is made on Tuesday. From a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar <clears throat> Looks poised to test its internal equality objective versus this current swing structure at uh, giving us a test now of the 6790s. From there, we're going to watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking for one more push to the downside, giving us a test of 6630s. From there, watch for bullish reversal patterns. As long as we maintain momentum divergence, we will then look for a break of the trend channel resistance, 6770s, on to the next upside objective of the high volume node at 6890s. And then we'll be looking for that um, B wave high to be tested at 70.29. And just rounding out our review here, let's check in with Bitcoin, our weekend risk barometer. And Bitcoin obviously <clears throat> took uh, took some losses the back end of last week based on the, uh, the Silvercrest announcement with respect to concerns about the contagion still spilling over from the FTX debacle. But from a technical perspective, we are looking for Bitcoin to test and maintain support at the 21,490s. And then from there, we're looking for this final upside extension for this leg to test the yearly pivot from below, just below 27,000. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 6th of March. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.